uh, that Jeff has started the recording uh, process. Um, My name is Justin Naylor. I'm the project manager for the South Cravens Road Potential Covert Improvements. Um, today is May 8th, and when we're holding a community meeting to discuss these potential improvements. Uh, moving forward, if this project moves forward, we have uh, Mike Bennett, who will be the project manager of the design through design and construction. Uh, our, our consultant engineer, Friesen Nichols, is on the line. They've been uh, helping us to develop this schematic so far. And we also have Rich Diot, who'd be the engineer of record taking the, the project through design and construction. At the bottom of this page is a, is a, is a link. Uh, in attendance today, we, we have Councilwoman Bivens. Uh, Councilwoman Bivens, would you like to say anything to, to kind of kick this meeting off? Hearing nothing, I think we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and get moving. And uh, Councilwoman Bivens, feel free to chime in any time you like. Uh, so, as I mentioned, the, the, this potential project does have a web page right now, and this is a snapshot of what it looks like. Uh, if, if you if you can easily find this website website by going to the City of Fort Worth uh, main website, which is fortworthtexas.gov. And you can uh, type a search in for Cravens Road, and this should, this website should pull up. It uh, just kind of gives you a quick overview. Uh, uh, if as this project moves forward, there will be uh, additional information uh, posted here. There will be project meetings hosted, and this is where this recording, the recording of this video, will live. Uh, to give a little overview of, of how this project has come to be, uh, this, come, this project is being looked at through the Transportation and Public Works Department, uh, specifically with the Stormwater Management Division as a sponsor. Uh, this is looked at through our Hazardous Roadway Overtopping Mitigation Program, or our HROM, HROM program. Uh, the goal of the HROM program is to look at uh, hazardous crossings where creeks uh, cross roadways and um, where creeks uh, cross roadways and we have uh, stormwater that may overtop the roadway uh, and threaten life safety. Now, currently this project is within what we're calling project development. And the purpose of project development is to define effective, affordable, and acceptable solutions. Uh, so within that process, we seek to understand the source of flooding. We want to coordinate with city plans like a master thoroughfare plan, which will give us guidance on how wide the road will be in the future. Um, if there's any trails or parks master plans in the area, we want to understand existing utilities. You know, is there a sanitary sewer line that's that's going to be an issue? Um, is there an 18 inch gas main per se that might? Um, is there an 18 inch gas main that might block the the improvement of the crossing altogether? Um, we seek to find out what, what our required permits are. Uh, as, as a local government, we do have to coordinate with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers on uh, that, that's our most frequent partner on these. And then we also want to un understand other site constraints, such as you know environmental factors and uh, how are, how are the residents going to perceive this? How how is this going to uh, to, to fit within the overall neighborhood? And so that that's where this project is currently within uh, project development. Uh, I saw a note come up that uh, audio is coming in and out. Is is that a, a universal issue? Is, is that Justin, no. can you can you hear me okay? Now I can, yes, ma'am. Okay, this is Oh we, we I think we lost you now. If there's any other staff that can Justin, are you recording this call? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I think I, I think I lost you again, uh, Councilwoman Bivens. You would, we'll know if we need to redo this call for the benefit of the community. 
I'm, I'm sorry, I caught just a little bit about redoing the call for the benefit of the community. Um, your, your audio is coming through pretty good, Justin. So we'll just record it and go ahead with the presentation. And then if, uh, then we can check the replay and make sure. Okay, I, I think we'll, we'll press on and, and uh, Councilwoman Bivens, if it's, Bivens is, if it's okay with you, if you wanted to reply in the chat, uh, if it's okay with you, we'll we'll press on today and then we'll we'll check the we'll check the recording and see, make sure that it, that it comes through clearly. And then if if we right. don't have a clear recording, then we can redo this one. And can you ask your your coworkers if they're hearing you, you know, consistently? Yes, I've seen in the chat that, that it's coming through consistently for them. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll press on and, and like I said, we'll, we'll double check the recording afterwards to make sure that it, uh, that it comes in clearly. So that if we post it, uh, it'll be audible for everybody. And if not, then we'll re we'll reschedule this again for in the future. Uh, so, again, we're looking at South Cravens here, which is kind of the, the crossing in particular is between Baylor street and Oakdale. Um, the, the reason this project is, is being looked at is to address uh, uh, roadway overtopping hazards from the channel as it crosses South Cravens. As, as many of you are aware, I'm sure uh, in, back in 2018, a vehicle was swept off the off the road, and 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 when that happened, the driver lost their life. Uh, so so this has risen to kind of the top of of our priorities, and and immediately and shortly thereafter, after that event, you know, the city was able to go out and install some additional safety features. Um, there's some delineators that were installed as well as additional signage indicating that this roadway may flood uh, when it rains. Uh, th those delineators help serve to indicate where the edges of the roadway are. As, as, and then there's also a, a flood a staff gauge indicating how deep the water may be. Uh, so so th those are some temporary measures until we can do a, a full project to, to address this uh, this crossing. And so here's another view of the project limits. Uh, we're looking at between Baylor Street to the north and Oakdale Drive to the south. Uh, the, the 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 blue the blue shading there represents the 100-year floodplain, which is essentially how wide we think the flooding is going to get during what's called the 100-year storm or the 1% chance storm. Uh, a little misnomer, you know. The 100 year may lead you to think that that might happen only once every 100 years, but really it's a percentage chance. It's a there's a, in any given year, there's a 1% chance that that amount of flooding will happen or will be exceeded uh, in any, any given year. And so this is kind of what we're looking at. It, it uh, give, given the, the records that we have of water overtopping the roadway and, and, and some modeling indicating the uh, as, as shown in this floodplain image here. As it, it does rise to the to a hazardous location. And so, what we're going to be doing in the next few slides, uh, there'll be in several images of the same that are laid out the same way, where north is to the right. Uh, so that would make uh, west uh, to the top of the screen and east to the south uh, to the bottom of the screen. Um, we're just going to kind of phase go through what uh, construction phasing might look like on this type of project. Um, and, and just kind of that way we can kind of build the improvements together as we look at this. Uh, you can see in, in blue there what the existing stream looks like. And, and it's flowing from the west to the east or from the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen. Uh, one of the first things that we would be doing if, if this were to be this, if this project were to continue through is we would be uh, potentially installing some sanitary sewer improvements. We would also be installing the uh, box culverts that would be replacing the small box culverts today. And then as well as we would also be installing uh, a storm drain system within South Cravens Roadway. 
after that, then we would be installing inlet and outlet protection, which is going to help uh, prevent erosion and stabilize that channel. And we'd also be installing a maintenance ramp on the west side or on the upstream side of the culvert. And then we'd be coming back and repaving uh, Cravens with a concrete street with curb and gutter. We'd be reconstructing the driveways that are affected and we'd be uh, reconnecting uh, with asphalt tie-ins to the existing Cravens Road on the north and on the south, and then Baylor Street uh, on the Baylor and Oakdale on the west side. And currently we're anticipating sidewalks with this project, though it's possible uh, that the sidewalks may be delayed to be installed at a future date. Uh, but this, even if the sidewalks aren't installed with this type of project or with this project, uh, the spaces of it would be available, so it wouldn't be a significant effort to install them again, uh, install them at a later date. Uh, so to kind of recap some of the project details and the benefits that we're looking at is reducing the South Cravens Roadway overtopping likelihood. I, I would love to be able to say that we could 100% uh, prevent it ever happening again, uh, but but we have we have design standards that we meet and, and we we design generally to what's called the 100 year storm as i discussed earlier uh, and and there's always the there's always the possibility that more more rain would fall than the 100 year um, but we we do have high confidence that we are making a significant improvement to the crossing and to the safety of the crossing uh, we're talking there's going to be an improved pavement uh, both by having a wider roadway section which, which is going to make it a little more comfortable for vehicles driving uh, in the area, and then concrete paving, which is going to have a little bit longer lifespan than, a, than an asphalt street. And, and then also the potential for sidewalks on both sides, on both sides of the roadway, which is going to help pro provide some connectivity in the future. Uh, to kind of go over some anticipated uh, project milestones, uh, again, since we're in the project development phase, these are subject to change as, as we gather more information and have a better understanding of what all of our constraints are. Uh, we anticipate at this point to be able to complete design in the fall of 2022 uh, with bidding and awarding of the, of the construction contract in winter of 2022 or 2023. Uh, with construction to start the, uh, then in spring of 2023, uh, lasting approximately 18 months. Uh, so, completing in fall of 2024. Uh, our current estimate is about 6.5 million, and, and it's currently funded out of our 2020 stormwater revenue bond fund. And so, with that, that, con that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to take any questions. Uh, I think we will start with what's in what may be in the chat box. Uh, Michael Crenshaw, can you uh, read off any questions that we have in the chat box? Yes, Justin, thank you for the presentation. Uh, one question came up uh, about will there be future uh, community meetings and as this uh, potential project progresses? Yeah, so if, if this project does progress through uh, through design, then there will be additional meetings at what we call the 60% set of plans, at the 90% set of plans, and then a pre-construction meeting, which is when we're going to have a contractor on board and they're going to have a lot, a lot more of the nitty-gritty details on it as to uh, what the exact timing is gonna look like. So there will be additional meetings, the notifications will come out uh, in, in similar ways as, as, to, as the way these notifications came out in mailers as well as in, uh, with robocalls. All right, thank you. Let's see, uh, another question. Do you anticipate the road being closed or open during construction? At this point, it's a, it's a little too early to say, to say, though, I think given the size of the culverts, there's probably a high likelihood that the roadway will have to be closed while those culverts are being built. Uh, but again, we're, we're a little bit early to say uh, definitively, and, and that's gonna be a better question as we get into the 90% and, and, and get into the pre-construction meeting. And we'll, we'll certainly have that kind of detail at that point. All right, thank you. Um, looks like one one last question on the board is uh, will people have access to their driveways? I know you mentioned a few driveways that would be reconstructed. Right. So we'll, we'll certainly be working with residents to, uh, to 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 minimize any access disruption 
Um, obviously, there's going to be times when a uh, front loader might be driving past the driveway, making it where you can't get out right then, but that's not really significantly different than you know, regular traffic. But when we are reconstructing those driveways, the, the schedules will be coordinated with you, with, with the property owners. And we can certainly uh, come up with maybe, we can maybe use high early concrete, which which might get, get the, drive, the uh, resident back in their driveways a little bit quicker. Uh, but, but those are some things that we can work uh, work on as we advance the design a little bit further, if, if that's what happens. All right, thank you. So that was, I think, most of the questions in the chat. Uh, if anyone would like to enter in any questions in the chat, feel free to click that button in the lower right-hand screen of the WebEx browser. Um, and at this time, if there's any of our call-in users, that have a, a question, so we can just mute yourself, un, or excuse me, unmute you. Uh, and if there's any questions from any of our call-in users would like to ask. Not seeing any, and of course, as Justin's got up on the screen, uh, his number, email address, the project website is on the screen as well, and similar notices will be given for future public meetings. We'll check on the audio, um, Justin, after the meeting and make sure the recording came through clear. Um, and it could be just me because I'm in a in a bad area, even with the hot spot. Uh, but how oh, do no. we? Uh, we can hear you now, so. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So I'm just going to look forward to accessing the recording. Uh, are you able to put in chat how we can see the recording, or should we just go to the project website? We can certainly put it in the chat, but it will be posted on the project website. Okay, I see it. Thank you. Justin, this is Jeff. Uh, the The recording will also be on our city YouTube channel. Um, I won't have that link until WebEx processes the recording and provides me uh, the actual recording. But uh, the, the easiest way is definitely go to the project website and it'll be posted there um, pretty quickly, probably on Monday, uh, once we have the recording. So. Very good, thank you. So we've got the project website and your contact information. I don't see any other questions coming in. Again, there will be additional communications from the city to everyone on this uh, as future meetings are planned. And Justin, Jeff, Councilman Bivens, anything additional? Uh, I just want to read out Justin's uh, email or phone number for those that are on the call. So, since they can't see the screen, it's 817-392-7953. And if you have any questions, please feel free to call Justin at any time. And I just say yes, thank please. you for spending your Saturday morning with us. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yep. Well, if there are no additional questions, then I think that can conclude the our, our, our presentation and everybody can go about their Saturdays then.